what an honor and privilege he has to share with you again. I want to speak today about something which I want to call to abide. And what does it mean to abide? Or is it just something that a preacher somewhere made up? Well, we're going to hear that now. But let us pray first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity. We honor you, we praise you, we adore you, we glorify your holy name. We ask, O oh God, that you will speak to our hearts in this, uh, during this time. And we honor you for all that you have done. And we will vow to give you the glory in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. I'm going to start with this scripture immediately and at uh, the, the person that, that's talking to us is Jesus himself. And this is what he says in John 15 verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. Now, the word here for continue is the Greek word meno, and it means, it's a primary verb that means to stay in a given place, a state, relation, or expectancy. Abide, continue, dwell, endure, be present. Remain, stand, tarry, so do not move, stay here, do not go out of my presence, stay here. And then of course the love that he mentions here isn't any kind, type of love, we know all the types of love, uh, filio, stoge, uh, that, that we normally, uh, eros, but this is agape love, godly love, that love that yes encompasses everything. So we see Jesus himself standing here and he is inviting us to come and stay in his love and he's so serious uh, about this he's so there's such a uh, tone of urgency in this that he does so ten times in one chapter abide in me stay with me but why because he know that the chances are very good that we as people will do it wrong again that we will rather listen to a preacher or another man or you know I've read this book and this some guru said the following, but this is Jesus himself, son of the living God. And he's telling us, if you want to, to, to have a successful life, stay in my love. It's not stay in my church, stay in my love. And I can, uh, we, we can tell you about some celebrity, some historic figure and you can say yes I know I've read his autobiography I've uh, read everything that was there I've watched every video on that person I really know him really does he know you no no he doesn't but the, the fact is what do you know you know historic facts that is all but and this is the problem we must understand that this is sadly the truth for Christians as well. You get people that, that confess to be Christians. They can quote vast portions of scriptures from the Bible. But their daily lives show you that it is nothing more than mere head knowledge. They don't live that which they teach, teach or preach. They just preach something for other people. I hope you will do it. But I don't keep myself to that standard. They almost stay in church, but they do not have a relationship with the Lord. They know the pastor or the reverend. They know the elders or the deacons. Maybe there are elders or deacons or the pastor or reverend themselves. Yet, there's no relationship with the one that they speak about. So when the, crumbs, the crunch comes and something bad or serious happens, or there's a serious challenge on their faith, during their life. And we know there are many challenges on our faith each and every day. Almost like they say, well, put your money where your mouth is. Show us your God. And 
all of a sudden I wonder what 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 just just maybe somebody's got this wrong. It was a good story about God and Jesus, but I don't really know. Do you think he exists? Do you really think uh, we've had it? People, we've had it. We've had it where, where, where uh, people that confess to be born again uh, on their deathbed. I've had it. Ask me. People that, that are grey with the we, uh, snow of many winters, they say to me, Have I really believed in a living God? Isn't He just, well, won't I die now and found out there was no God after all? And this is a sad, sad thing. So, so, so why, why do you doubt? Very easy, because you've never met Him. The thing is, you will never doubt someone's existence. Once you've met them, even if it was one fleeting second, even if in a passing by you've seen somebody and they say that is so-and-so walking there. Tomorrow when somebody asks, I wonder if this really a so-and-so. Yes, I've, I saw him. He walked past me at the airport or in town or wherever. Maybe somebody on, uh, at a social gathering or event says, uh, let me just introduce you, this is so-and-so. You will always know that I have seen him, I've met him. So whenever somebody speaks about that person, I know that I know that I know that he ex or she exists because I saw them. But if you've never had a, 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 a personal meeting with God, a moment where you, where you met him, whether it was on your knees, whether in church, whether it is in your inner chamber, and I want to tell you, the safest place, the best place to start to meet God is on your knees. It's in your prayer closet. Because whenever you meet God in a church, it may be that, that it, is a, it is a God. It is a spirit. It is, it is a spirit or God with, with the flavor of the church. But once you meet God inside of your prayer closet, you will know that you know that you know that I've met with God. I understand Him. I, I, I know who He is. And whenever I see someone else, whenever I see a substitute, whenever I see someone portraying God and it, and it differs from what I've, the person that I've met, I will know, no, this is not the true God. This is not the one that I serve, the one that I walk with and talk with. The one that said to, to me, abide with me. Now, many times Christians abide in church. They abide with a group. They abide with a denomination. But they don't abide in His love. So how can we do it? How can we abide with God? The first thing is, it starts with a hunger and a thirst after God. Not after the things of God. Not after uh, God, uh, if you heal me, I will know you are God. No, it's not about His gifts. I take Him, I, will, I want to take you on face value. I want to say, Lord, I see you, you see me, I believe in you. I've met you. I want you to try and, and start a beginning to, to say, God, I want to meet you. I want to meet you above all else. Psalms 20 uh, 7 verse 4 one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple so why does he want to dwell with God and in his house to behold the beauty of the Lord the person for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Pavilion is a special, almost like a, a tabernacle, a dwelling. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in, this, in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou sayest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, 
Then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are rise, risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So, so, so David writes, he says, I've got need of God. And then he cries out to God first. And then he tells everyone around him, because I have cried out to God, he will help me. Why? Because I know there's a God. I've met him. But I've met him in that still moment, in the moments where, where I yeah, stood before him and says, Lord, teach me your ways. What do you want me to do? In Colossians 3 verse 15 we read, after we've now called out by faith according to Psalm 27. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now, now, listen to, to what Paul is writing to the Colossians here. He tells them, you must understand, you must get to the point where you uh, trust God. But why do you trust Him? Because you know His Word. You dwell richly in wisdom. Why? Because the Word of God dwells in you. When He dwells in you, you will dwell in, 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 in all the wisdom and teaching and admonishing that you need. And then he says, go on and, and encourage one another. Take one another by the hand. If you are strong today and you see a brother or a sister weak, do not judge them, but take them by the hand. Say, can I help you? Can I come underneath you and lift you up? Because I want you to be victorious. Your uh, success is my honor. It's a privilege for me to help you. And I cannot overemphasize the peace of God. That is not normal peace. That is that shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing lack, lacking. Nothing broken. Everything that is needed for you to prosper is present. Everything that comes against you to for, uh, prohibit you to prosper is absent. That is God's peace. God wants you to speak to Him as a friend. How does a friend speak? I'm not talking about somebody that's uh, um, uh, contemptuous in the way he speaks to his friends. No, no. I'm talking about someone sitting with his best friend, sharing with him the joys. Do you know what I've seen today? Do you know what, uh, how blessed I was today? Do you know what I've tasted today? What I've eaten or drank today? Do you know what, what, what I saw? It was so wonderful. And also, oh, a few years know the day that I went. It, the next happened with me. I went through this. I saw this. I don't want to go through this again. But that is the way that God wants us to come. Not with some, uh, just quoting a few scriptures and sitting there and, uh, okay, the God, okay, see you again next time. When it's, when, when it's my prayer time again. No, no. I'm not angry when my friend comes. I'm glad. I, and when he don't come, I go and seek for him or her. You go to that best friend of yours. God wants you to share your heart, to share your, your successes and your failures in all honesty with Him. To tell them, you know what, I blew it today. I lost my temper. I, I said something I, I normally wouldn't have said. I don't know what's wrong. What do you think? Help me. Because that's what friends does. In that moment, when everybody's turning against you, they are the ones that say, what happened? Can we work on this? Let me help you. Don't leave God behind in your prayer closet. Because that doesn't mean anything. All that that will say to the world out there is, is that you are ashamed of your God. You've got it many times in, 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 in families, especially uh, families with a high social status. And then there's a child born into that family that are not the brightest according to people or, or, or do have some disability and they hide him. They almost uh, pretend like he or she doesn't exist. They're ashamed of him. What will the people think if I tell them that I've got a special needs child? 
a people that is wrong on, the, on all levels. I mean, even I don't think now I've got so many examples. I'm mean, just thinking of Pastor uh, Willis that, that said uh, that they had a Down syndrome son. He was, he was already a, a, young, a grown man, an adult. And, and he says, that child, God put him in our lives to, kept, to keep us humble. Because in the most un, uh, you know, the times that, 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 that the, where the opportunity was the, the, the bad, the, the, the worst timing, this young man will just run naked through the house with all the guests present. And they can either say, we don't know him, it must be somebody else's child, or there goes our son. There goes our son. But they never ignored him. They cherished him. And in the end, their love and, 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 and the, the godliness inside of them also rubbed off on him. Now the Albert Willis will say, that's my son, that's my portion. I'm proud of who he is. I love him. And today... You and I need to, 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 to not treat Jesus or God or the Holy Spirit as if we are ashamed of the, the, the triune God. But I must be proud of who I am. I must be proud of my heritage my, as a child of God. God, I'm so glad to be your son. I cannot but shout it from the rooftops. Don't leave God behind. But go out. Start to act as if He is present with you every step of the way, as He is. Because He is there. He is there. But once you start acting it, where once you start manifesting it, Lord, uh, uh, the moment before I say something else in, in, a, in a conversation, I think, but God is standing here. I won't say ever say this before God. I won't judge that person. I won't to do something bad against somebody else. I won't plan or connive behind someone's back. Why? Because God is here. He sees what I'm doing. He's my best friend. I will not hurt him with my actions. And that is how our lives start to change. That is why the Bible says, do everything you do as if unto God. I'm not doing it because uh, my, my, the, the person that I work for once my employer wants me to do this, I do it because I'm doing it for God. That is why I do it to the best of my ability. Your time in God's presence is not evaluated on your feelings. It doesn't be, if, if, if you come out of your prayer closet and you say, well, there were no goosebumps today. I didn't laugh or I didn't feel like crying or there was no shouting or there was no great revelations. It's not about feelings. But if you go out and say no. You know I sat there. And in that stillness I was so aware of God's presence. I had so much peace. Then the word of the old song comes. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh what a foretaste of heaven divine. Like the, in the song of Solomon. Uh, verse, uh, uh, chapter 6 verse 3. He writes the following. says I am my beloved and he is mine. I belong. I belong. We need to understand that we do not, do not need to do more to gain the Lord's friendship or grace. But we must surrender all. Not do more, but surrender more. Everything. Give over and believe that my God already paid it all. He wants you to spend time with Him. To equip you with that which you need to fulfill your calling. Do I have scripture for this? Well, let's read it. Acts 4 verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness and unfettered eloquence of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and untrained in the schools, common men with no educational advantages, they marveled and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. The people amongst which the disciples were walking knew them. They have seen them there many times. They know they are just one of us. They haven't been to the best schools or the best technicons or universities. They haven't done some special course, went to some special Bible college. But we see Jesus in them. And we know they had been with Jesus. We recognize Him in them. 
We recognize the way that Jesus talked, that Jesus walked, that the things that Jesus said, and the way that he said it, that love that just flowed out of him. We recognize that in his disciples. Think of 1 Kings 19, where the Lord, Lord visited Elijah. There in the, in the, where he was hiding in the crack of the rock. And Elijah stood there and we know there was a mighty rushing wind. There were fire and earthquake and all of that. But the Bible says God wasn't in any of those. We like the big things. We like the shaking. But we don't like the times. In our prayer closet when it's only us and God. Because we know then we've got to face the music ourselves. And the Bible says in that moment. There was a time of silence. The Bible in the Hebrew calls it Demawa. Demawa means a breath of silence, a breath of stillness. Almost like a... Just that. The Bible says in that moment, God visited him and spoke to him. All of us like it when there's worship in church, when there's a big band playing, a worship team making and singing the most beautiful songs and making the be most beautiful music. And we love that and it's not wrong to like it. But many times we miss it because that time is for God. That time is the worship that we, we, we bring up to Him and that should be with everything inside of us. That should be uh, exuberant and, and, and just giving over to God. But in that small time, many times we ourselves don't feel the blessing there. But in that small time, moments that still moments where we sit at home we just know God is here with me he's in my situation he knows my needs he knows my desires he knows my shortfalls and shortcomings because he's God I want to ask you today as we finish this short video Will you not go, wherever you are, maybe you are driving, maybe, and, and just listening to the soundtrack of this, maybe you are sitting somewhere and waiting for an appointment and you've just said, well, let me just pass the time. But won't you just, if you close your eyes, or whether you don't close your eyes, that's got nothing to do with it. But will you just say, Lord, breathe upon me, O breath of God. What is the breath of God? Ruach HaKodesh, His Holy Spirit, breathe upon me. Speak to me again. Speak to me again. Abide with me, I pray. Every step of the way, abide with me. Heavenly Father, all I'm going to ask is to that you will abide with me, with us today. And that you will be the one that shows us that your word is still true. Thousands of years after Jesus Christ walked this earth. Now with the Holy Spirit in our midst. Holy Spirit I ask that you will once again breathe on us. Touch us, change us, renew us. Make us to do the things that our Father wants us to do. Help us to understand his perfect will for our lives. And show us how to walk in that. Which we were called to do. I honor you and I praise you. And I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, each and every one that watched or listened. In Jesus' wonderful name, Amen. Ask God. He wants to abide with you. God bless you. Of God, breathe upon me, sweet spirit of the Lord. As I lift my hands in surrender to your name, most high. I adore Jesus. 